you'll hear many people talk about justice, about fairness. When it comes to survival on the surface of this planet, there is no justice, there is no fairness. You either survive or you don't. And more than 99% of life forms that ever evolved to float, to swim, to crawl, to just stand, to walk, to run, or to fly around this planet are already extinct. They no longer exist. They were given a window of opportunity, a shot at trying to survive as a species, but they didn't make it to this day. Was that fair on them, that millions of species are all gone by now? It certainly wasn't. What's remarkable is that we are still here. We are among the very, very, very rare survivors. We should all feel really good about ourselves for that reason alone, shouldn't we? Our whole planet may be a research experiment that's been set up by some higher form of intelligence. Even worse, it may have been developed for entertainment for someone else in another universe. If that is the case, then we're definitely doing quite well at the moment. In our efforts to survive, we've had friends, but we've also had a few long-standing enemies. And there are also occasional shocks to our entire round playground, so-called selective pressures, in a form of random meteor strikes super volcanoes, climate change, tsunamis. In this experiment, or a game, we are a team of humans and should probably stick together, because although we are doing quite well, we are still far from being completely safe. Thinking of humanity's position in this way, it would make a lot of sense to fight less among ourselves and to collaborate more. We should also embrace technology which is something that other species don't have yet, to give ourselves further advantages. But back to our original question. How did we avoid extinction? Is it because we're special? Well, it doesn't seem so. There were other humans too, at least five, if not ten other species of humans, or maybe even more. But they weren't lucky enough to make it. What happened to them? Did we fight them? Did we interbreed? Do we still carry their genes? And most importantly, why are we the only ones left? What was our special skill that kept us alive when all other forms of humans starved, froze or were wiped out by our competitors? Both those visible to us like predatory animals or invisible like bacteria and viruses. Is it the shape of our body, not too big, not too small, with our fingers as useful tools? Is it our intelligence? Is it our ability to communicate and collaborate? Is it our curiosity and drive for exploration of new places? We don't really know. We do know that many other species can see, hear or smell far better than we can. Never mind that, some can fly, navigate in the dark, sense electric potential in their surrounding, live both in and out of the water, or live far longer than we can. So what was our own advantage that helped us survive to this day? We don't really know. We only know that human existence on this planet is by no means guaranteed. It may only be temporary, and it's constrained by resources available to us. What resources do we need to keep beating the odds? Luckily not many, only three. We need food to eat, water to drink, and air to breathe. That's it really. Without food, we can only last a few weeks. Without water, only a few days. Without air, only a few minutes. But how much food, water and air is there for us all? Is there enough? It is good that other species can't easily over-exploit our shared supplies. So we are quite safe from them in that regard. But 
Are we safe from ourselves? Clean air, water reserves, and soil for food production keep us all alive on this planet. We should really make sure that they are protected. It's nice to watch Star Wars movies and think how we could all live in space quite easily. But those are movies, not reality. Actually, we cannot live in space. We can only live here, on the surface of the planet Earth. So we should probably take good care of it before we figure out how to live anywhere else. So far, we only took a peek at a few other planets of our solar system. But we found no obvious traces of life on any of those. And they are billions of years old. If some forms of life were ever passing here, they could have at least left some trace. We like doing that when we come to new places. We try to leave a drawing, a statue, a temple, a tower, but no such thing anywhere in our neighborhood. So, life is probably quite rare in the universe, we just can't say how rare at this point. There's one more problem with our own survival though. We all seem to be mortal. It would be nice to discover how to stop aging and reverse it. How to be back to the age of 20-something when we look our best and feel our best and how to permanently remain in that state. We already had some heroes who worked out how to protect us from our invisible enemies, lethal infections. They single-handedly doubled the number of humans on the planet with their discoveries, extending our lifespan and keeping us much safer than we were before. Some new heroes may, someday, understand how to stop aging and make us immortal as individuals. When that happens, a generation of eternally young humans will come that will be able to say, okay, the Earth is ours and we'll just live here forever. They won't need to reproduce. They will even be able to improve themselves artificially, steal the best traits from other species or even design some entirely new ones like some gadgets of the future. They will never feel short of time. Good for them. The history and the future of human survival leave us all with many interesting questions. In the series Survival, the story of global health, we will consider scientific evidence that's been accumulated so far and propose some answers, however uncertain. But one thing is highly likely. As long as we remain mortal as individuals, we'll need to continue to reproduce in order to survive as a species. And our own reproduction will remain our weak spot, which we'll need to guard very carefully if we want to continue our explorations. So we'll start our journey by considering how a human life begins.